Hello everyone and welcome back to round one back nine coverage of the 2023 Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship presented by Barbasol. We're here in Devon Park, yeah. Matt Keats Memorial Course, the scene of the largest payout in disc golf history. Players are competing this week for $40,000 first place prize. Fourth place is getting $10,000. Yeah, I'm gonna explain something. I was <laughs> on the bottom cards, right? And I'll explain the difference in feelings from the bottom cards when we're taking a bunch of bogeys. Mm -hmm. They mentioned to me that I won't name specifics, but they said this feels like we just we just randomly met up for a casual round at a league, <laughs> and our friends came to watch. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't think that the lead card feels that way. <laughs> no, certainly not. not. Certainly not Calvin, as he is no. off to the races. He it not only started the tournament off with six under par. He also is shooting a dang fine round as well. Well, we are on hole 10 here, the easiest hole in the course. And the story in the front nine has to be Ricky Wysocki getting six birdies, shooting even par. I, maybe I've never seen anything like that before. Zero pars, three double bogeys. Yeah. Par three, 333 feet. This is the correct play. Push it to the left. Get yourself a little putt. That Go to 100 gone. under. Well, more specifically, that putt is coming for four under to get him to 11 under for the event. That's a nice. Isaac pushing that right side. Is it hyzering in time? It goes through and it kicks back towards the pin. Mm. So that would be another tester putt for him coming up at, uh, let's call it 33 feet. You'll take it, though, from where that was heading. Heiser flip. This seems like a flex if you got it but he throws the hyzer flip like you said he's been working on and that looked mm -hmm. great i don't it's, think this is the time to to start throwing new 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 shots I, he's he's doing not great this round four over for the round go in and Ooh. it's like ricky is not interested in getting a par once again adding another layer to that jump as wedding cake you're mm -hmm. talking about oh Oh, this no. time right side for Isaac. Just a couple times left in the first nine. And that'll get Gannon to three over. The uh, he's got some work to do for sure. Dreaded triple bogey that he took on the fourth hole. Calvin now with a turkey. Birdie streaks are rare on this course. This is the place to do it, though. Yes, I would say this little area, and then coming into this downhiller hole eleven on the next on the next shot, you can get on a little streak, and then it gets very difficult, very fast with one little birdie hole sandwich in the middle. At this point, I think through ten holes, I think Anthony Barella had a five hole birdie streak. Yep. Pretty incredible, six through ten he picked up. Calvin now three shots clear of the field. Oh, once again, just a reminder, these guys are just trying to compete to get into the top 12 scores. Now, if there are any ties in that 12th score, the tiebreaker will be regular season points for the Disc Golf Pro Tour. So there will be no playoffs yep. to get into the finals. Now, obviously, come the finals Saturday or Sunday, if there are any ties, there will be a playoff. And then one thing. If there are ties, as Calvin gets his turned over, can it slow down? It's not going to slow it's down. It's not going to, but you know, I don't think you mind going long on, on 11, as long putting as back you, uphill. You just don't want to hit any metal. I was just going to say, as long as you lay it up. But ties, other than 12, so if you tie for like 13th, there's no tie break. Everybody just tied. So you, you don't get like a bump in cash on yes. somebody else. Else's. Okay. Yeah, which is a question that was asked. Okay. Ricky, guessing this is maybe not a birdie. Maybe a... That's a, birdie. That's a, birdie. That's a birdie. He's looking at it. That is a very, very tricky spot. It's still runnable, though. He's oh, not for sure. He's, he's, not, going, he's going for that. Yes. But I, I'm saying on a side hill, uh -huh. he has to take it out of the basket. Isaac, this has got a little bit too much speed, but it hits something at the end. And stays pretty close. Good drive for Isaac. Even better result. When I say take it outside the basket, he's still trying to make it. 
take it outside right. the range of the putt um, to swing it back in. Here well, we go. here it is. To stay par free. Ah, and that will end the streak at 10 holes. Calvin, over the top. Yeah, it's one way not to grab metal. <laughs> Uh, good birdie for Isaac. Even though Isaac's missed a few birdie opportunities from 28 to 32 feet, he is still keeping it relatively clean, just that one bogey to speak of, and playing pretty well. Yeah, scary guy coming into this event, especially with last year. Mm -hmm. Nerves got to him a little bit down the stretch. Sure. And with a, how polished he is because of the success he's had this season, if he's in that same situation, there's not going to be any nerves, I don't think. There'll be nerves, but he's going to know how to He knows how them. to handle them. Yeah, he's definitely proven that this year. As he's in second place, I mean, yeah. these guys have a stronghold on getting into that top 12. Flying over 12 here, a short. Well, this is a risk reward tee shot. You can go short here to try to get by this ditch just short of it, or you can try to play a flex backhand into the gap. Either way, it is going to be a long, narrow tunnel to this pin back here on the other side of this little dip in the ground. Tricky par four. Yeah, I like the options it gives you. Turnover play, just fine. Get around that one. Yeah. Uh, and that's Boy. what happens, man. If you miss, if you hit that tree, it just sends you out by the road. This is your typical play. Sidearm. Yeah. That could be fine though. That that might that might have like a little hyzer flip down the tunnel. The mistake here with the forehand is I think what Calvin was doing. A little bit too much hyzer. I like what Gannon was going with with a flat shot because I think that you want to skip into the hill late. There is that left to right hillside as Ricky goes big turnover and hits tree almost huge drive. Now he's going to be scrambling a bit. But with that left to right slope, if you have too much hyzer on your forehand, you end up getting out of position down the hill too far to the right. Ricky does have. One option present, and he misses the line, still goes forward, but not where he wants to be. So easy to find yourself off the fairway on your approach here on 12. So important to stay in the fairway because these woods are so tricky on this fairway. Or just do that. Don't hit anything. Get pretty close to pin high, I'm guessing. It didn't hit anything, so it's got to be close to pin high. It's Cal. He, yeah, he's loving the result. What is this move? Ambitious attempt, a forehand roller attempt for Gannon, and that's going to bite off a lot of distance. Oh, that's yeah. a great shot. Especially after hitting an early limb. Didn't really seem to negatively impact the result. Ooh, the sidearm flex. We saw Isaac throw a great forehand on the front nine, and he's dialed up another butte. Yeah, that's amazing. If this guy develops a reliable forehand, we're toast. I mean, the field itself. Already toast. I'm already toast. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're, we're talking butter. burnt burnt toast, yeah. though. Like, not edible. Oh, not edible. We're, not, we're talking, like, burnt Pop-Tarts. A good scutter down the fairway. Isn't bored all make up for here for that shot? I think Calvin will be happy to take par here on 12. Oh, Gan Burr. That is a filthy birdie. No give up in this kid's game, huh? Wouldn't expect to see that from him. Pro Tour Championship a couple years ago back at Hornets is really where he, I think, really started to emerge. Yeah. It was absolutely. the first time that we were like, all right, Gannon, we saw you had some good events this year, but he took it. He had a pretty deep run yes. that year, and next season he was off to the races. Good putts for Ricky and Isaac. Oh, he picked up his bag for him. What a cutie. Ricky's made some good putts. 
That's yeah, but right now he's on a really disappointing par streak of two holes, so something he's got to look out for. Introducing Disc Raptor, the best way to clean and dry your discs on the course. Make short work of mud, moisture, and dust in a quick spin. Made of quality materials that are built to last. Compact revolutionary design with synthetic turf and high surface microfiber cleaning surfaces. Lightweight and easy for travel. It's there when you need it. Welcome to the future of disc golf. Flying over the par 4 13, 630 feet. So important to get to the corner right here. And there you have a pretty technical downhill approach, but if you come up short of that gap, your birdie opportunity is minimized greatly. Very demanding tee shot. Fourth most difficult hole on the course. Looking pretty good for ooh, Gannon. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh. Just dead. Just dead. He was he was skirting close to every tree in the forest so right So close to absolute perfection, and now early right side, you're playing for par. Yeah, this one you don't accidentally find a birdie. Mm -hmm. It is with a drive like this. That is so quality. And even there, I mean, he could get more turn and be in a better spot, but he's still going to yeah. really, no matter how good the drive is, you're going to be scrambling a bit on that second shot. Is this going to turn in time? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Oh, and bummer. Scrambling. Great tee shot, though. It makes bogey really hard. Mm-hmm. And Ricky, a little bit left side, kicks even more left. That will that'll be tough. Cannon uh -oh. getting a little confident with the flick roller. Two holes in a row now with his second shot. This time it didn't quite work out as well. Ooh, I think that'd be good. Did that you think that went out the route that he was intending? Yes. Just maybe the way the camera was lined up, it looked like he yanked that left, but it worked out pretty well. Maybe he was trying to go over that left leg. <laughs> tough. <laughs> uh oh. Hmm. Should be a pretty basic par approach for Calvin from that left side. I think in this spot, this is a play for about 35 feet. Yeah, not a bad call. Hard to get parked from that angle. You can if you throw the sidearm turnover. Yeah, and I mean, he's shown he's got some there. But he also putts good. I think so we've that, just discredited him because he's thrown so many incredible backhand turnovers that we just think he doesn't have a forehand. But when he needs it, he seems to have a little bit of confidence there. Oh, I think I gave Calvin way too much credit. That was no easy scramble at all. I thought he was farther down the hill. Either way, he makes pretty good work of it and has a relatively short putt for the par. I don't... I think that's an awkward distance right there. You're right. It, he should be making... Oh. oh, my goodness, Ricky. He should be making that, but I think straddle with the little trees in the way... So here's the thing about Calvin for me. Yep. How has he looked so far today? Is a nice birdie there for Isaac. Has he has he looked tentative? No. Then his putts inside the circle go in. Yeah. When Calvin looks tentative, you can tell pretty early on. Yeah, but look at this little number. I'm not saying it's a guarantee. I just, it, it just look at that that form that flow there. That is what we expect to see from him. Can't even walk up the hill and you're giving him 25 footers too. Has he missed one yet? No, he makes every. He does. Ricky almost pulled a birdie out of the magician's hat with that tough kick to the left off the tee. Chaining out right side from 100 feet. Another long bid almost goes in for Rick. But Isaac finds the range outside the circle for the big birdie on 13. Isaac closing that lead. I mean, they're not really even a lead. There's it's what you lead. have it's, on. Yeah, it's just the qualify. It's so weird because it's just it's just safety. Yeah. All they're doing is giving themselves more tree kicks. Yeah, and tree kick buffers for Friday. Yeah, this is not. There's nothing safe about this. 406 playing 475. 
it seems like. It's so far. It's it, so straight and far. And there's just trees everywhere. If you don't throw it dead straight, you're done. Sometimes you see a couple good kicks, kicks though, like right side kick, left side kick. No. Not with that one. If you just kick four feet in the woods, it's just, <laughs> I mean, you're taking a bogey. Yeah. It's so hard. Look how smooth that is. Heiser flip for Gannon. Look at this late turn. Very just, I love oh. seeing him change the, the fundamental form and just commit to it and look at the results. They're paying off. He's off to a really good battle back stretch right now. Uh-oh. So that doesn't kick into the woods, but it's just far enough on that side where it's really going to minimize his approach angle. Turn. And Ricky going high speed. He's going rive here. And what a drive that is. <laughs> just, you got, you just don't understand an how arrow hard that rive. is. How hard this that shot is. is. Come fly to, fly to, I'll tell you what. Paul will buy your plane tickets, folks. Everyone, buy your tickets to Charlotte. I don't care where you live. Yeah, and if you come here and you show me first shot you birdieing this hole or putting it past the basket, I'll I'll reimburse you. Reimburse your tickets. <laughs> <laughs> because it's not going to happen. Better watch out. There's a caveat to that. You have to, I don't know. We're just messing, po folks. Please don't take that as serious. No, I'm serious. <laughs> Bring it. I'm a gambling man. <laughs> and Calvin, that will be oh, 27 feet for the bogey. Isaac also in the woods, and he's still got work for his bogey. You just know it's in, man. That's a good putt. How many people in the world do you think can possibly put this one deep? Deep? Uh, that's what I'm saying. Make it past the basket. How, how many people? Uh, I mean, a lot of people now. In the world, a lot of people can. But Will, not a lot of people. You know, it's just like the 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 level of expertise it takes to, to manipulate a drive this long and straight and still have the energy to go long, It's, it, it's you, the, that list dwindles down quickly. To Ricky. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, to, to throw a speed 13 like that and just keep the plane just barely moving left or right, it takes a, a deep knowledge of his discs. Interesting point, actually. I learned this today from Brian Earhart. Ricky Wysocki put aside his disc that he won at least a few of his drivers that he won this event last year with. And he said, I'm going to save these for next year so they didn't get beat up anymore. Just wanted to take those same drivers with him this year, knowing how well they suited these fairways, which I think is a pretty remarkable thing for a player to do. Wow. I'm throwing the same ones and somehow they got stable. <laughs> they got more overstable. Yeah, like, I've had a few discs re resurrect in that way where they just get more overstable over time. Can't figure it out. Either that or our arms are slowing down, sir. I refuse to believe that one. <laughs> Hole 15, dead straight. If you go the backhand route, and uh, that is just on a string for Gannon. Beautiful tee shot. There is a left to right hmm. play. I don't quite understand that with Ricky's ability to throw the forehand, to see him throw yeah, that turnover agreed. backhand. The turnover backhand line is is honestly pretty garbage. Guarded, yeah, very, very I don't guarded. like it over there. What I do like is this player throwing this line. Like, I feel like Ricky has the capability of doing that exact same shot. Yeah. I'm surprised he doesn't. He could even take that speed 13 and throw it down there. <laughs> right? Like, Good run there for Isaac, and Calvin appears to be lining up the straight shot as well. I'm okay, surprised just, how many hmm. people throw this route. It's tight. It just, Very tight off, off the get-go, and then it opens up gradually to the pin, but you have to those narrowly, are You have to narrowly miss that first tree on the left yep. side, and it's, it takes so much confidence to pull that shot off. Do you go that way? I throw the sidearm. The sidearm just got that natural path to the basket. I'm so, I really am surprised that Ricky doesn't go that way. When I'm playing for fun, practicing, I, I go the right side. I think that's the funner, more rewarding play. And then sure. if, if you can coast it all the way into the hole, you're going to see it the whole way, and you'll get this lucky skip. Sure. And good birdie for Gannon, and Isaac wanted to pull away. He thought, no way is that going in. But in the end, it's in the basket. 
and the straight shot paying dividends for these players. Calvin looking straight into the sun. And a decent par save for Ricky. It can get pretty nasty on that right side there. Another big cliff if you go far enough right and also a lot of woods to deal with. So certainly happy he's not taking another over par stroke. You really can't afford to do that anymore with three triple bogeys. Doubles. Doubles, excuse me, sorry. Triples would be gnarly. Yeah. Nice Valley, Montana, with my family. When we were bored, my parents would just be like, go outside. That's where memories are made. It's such a part of childhood that I feel like is being lost today, and I have desperately tried to instill that into my kids. Hole 16, par 3, 410. Scratch that, 485. Yeah, it plays like it. Up the hill, it is 410, but it's a straight up hill and a very narrow. Think about the one where Ricky went deep. Same Two hole. Two holes ago, yep. Just uphill now. Very seldom birdied. Hole 16, third hardest hole on the course. Hardest par three out there. Isaac getting that thing to turn late. So Isaac of him. He really is one of the most Isaac Robison-like people I've ever yeah, met. Yeah, it's it's fascinating to see how he's developed. Into himself. Yep. Going eagle. And Calvin turning this one over, hitting the tree. That was close. He's just got to start it off just a tiny bit more hyzer. Uh-oh. Oh, no, no, no. Left early is... Bad Bogey. news. Bogey. And forehand roller? Mm-hmm. I mean, hey, it's, good. it's still going. Wow. I mean, that's a good bogey save. He could make that. Save. Yeah, he's in he's in Ricky range for sure now. Ooh. <laughs> Giving that a bit of scare, still putting on the parachute brakes. Hanging out about 22 feet away for the par now. And Cannon giving that a good run. Sit softly. Ricky from 60 feet. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> he could make that. That's a ridiculous par. That's a ridiculous par. That is just the most Ricky thing you, you get to see. I mean, barely off on this tee shot. A lot of spin, a lot of power, so it gets a huge hard kick, and he finds a way through, makes a long putt for the par. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Isaac is really putting together a solid round, even with the three missed putts. Good par there. This is a good par to get. What are some statistics on this one? Again, very few birdies on the day. Ben Calloway, Isaac Robinson, only two players. The score did surrender three triple bogeys and four other bogeys. Oh, wow. So you either got a triple or just a single? No, I'm sorry. Did I say triple again when I was trying to say double? What is my deal with that? Two, three? It was, maybe it was because there's three of them. Three double bogeys okay. is what I meant to say. But yeah. Big numbers. Just a lot of players that probably did what Ricky did, just didn't do the second part or the third part. Yep. Two brand new holes to finish. 17 through a very tight gap, trying to get at least 450 off the tee. If not, you're gonna be throwing a very uncomfortable distance into this incredibly tight, peeled off to the right side basket location. So, so difficult. And I think this is the most important tee shot on the course. If you don't put yourself into position, you, you're you automatically bogeying. Like right now, Isaac Robinson is nearly a guaranteed bogey. You think? I think so, yeah. Okay. Again, a bogey? same. Yeah, it's a, I, I would say nearly guaranteed. Okay. Because from there, 
he, yeah, you can't. Yeah, you're right. You can't get 400 feet of distance. It, how? I mean, in that you need 450 to put yourself into position to get to the pin on your next. Beautiful. Lifting, pushing. This is going to be far enough. He could throw a sidearm in. I was going to say the 18 yard box for the soccer field is the key landing zone, but he's a little bit right of perfection. I think he's still going to have a decent spike hyzer angle. This is going to be better. Even better because it might not have the same distance, but it's higher and drifting to a better angle. Oh, the distance is nearly the same. Sidearm roller. Uh, I think air shot. Air shot. And a little twizzle off the bat, but decent You approach. go from there? Well, he's going to be 470 feet from there. Mm, he doesn't so, go. Oh, boy. And Isaac, just right side, you have, look what you have. You have nothing. You can't manufacture anything. So from here, best case scenario for Isaac with a two-step run-up is get to position, throw a great approach, maybe make a good putt, walk out with bogey, and just thank God you did. He's going. And I don't think it's going to hold turn this long enough. great, doesn't it? Just the height. Mm. Looks like he might have crossed in circle I one, think though. He, I think they're going to give that to him. Oh, yeah. And he's essentially parked now. So not a bad play yeah, for it'll be the a bogey. bogey. Yeah. It'll be a bogey. That's the score Isaac's hoping to get now. A lot tighter, a lot more turn. Safe. And outside C1. So he's got his work cut out for him. And now we get to the two big drives here. Ricky up first. Farther away, but better angle. He likes hugging it tight right there. Yeah, and he's going to be rewarded with a circle's edge putt. I like that play. You're kind of avoiding the disastrous, pushing it too far, going out yep. of bounds long. Higher. Probably more inside. Oh, well, I don't know. I don't Just know anymore. Spike down. What? How? How? Seemed like it was higher and, <laughs> and coming, but it was so stable or something. I it's really know. good. <laughs> what a bogey save for Isaac. Outrageous. Look at this bogey save. Are you kidding? Oh. <sighs> Maybe one of the more entertaining putting forums to watch. Doesn't make ever. any sense to me. Ever. I mean, it's just, it's so cool. It just goes flip. Just a casual little flip. -flip. This is rusted root. Send me on my way. Rusted root being a band. Send me on my way being a song for our editor who is confused. A drop in birdie for Calvin. I don't know how many weeks in a row it is now, but we are going to finish on the hardest hole on the course. A very common trend. Kind of like that. Yeah, I, I love that. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah. You don't know how it's going to shake out. You finish with the birdie on 18. It feels way better when you do it on a hole like this one. But not many people are going to be able to. Par four, 830 feet, and you're going to need to get every bit of 450 before you have any angle whatsoever to attack this on the second shot. There's mandatory left side of that light pole that you see there to this incredibly challenging green. And the OB line is way off that Barber Saw and Disc Golf Network wall. It is a very challenging hole, 4.56 average. That's a good start, Paul. That is a good start. I, sh wow. I think he'd like a little bit more distance. But it, it starts funneling in and gets tighter yeah. the farther you go, too. Just head with like. I mean, he's through a great shot. Sit down. I could go in the woodsies. I, yeah. I, I think for this 
hole to really play the way that I think would be perfect would be to open up that left side a little bit more or open up the right side a bit more with the out of bounds line. Is this line. going too far right? It appears so, yes. Out of bounds for Isaac. That's a bummer. He's going mid-range to, to play to, safe. To just let, hit the gap. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Gannon is also going mid or slow of some kind just to make the corner. And then from there, I'm sure he's just going to be pitching up to the corner. Watch where... Isaac is throwing this. This is where Gannon will most likely be trying to play too. There's a bubble of safety over there on that left side. Gannon needs to watch out. This is a little bit early of that safe spot. Fine. A little bit. And he's not quite sure, but I think in the end it does come up safe. Calvin's got attack mode written all over him. Man, this is an aggressive shot. Oh, wow. It's just, I mean, that shot can only be drawn up to a practice for the weekend. I've got to imagine. Uh, and being 12 under. And That's what I'm saying. He's got, he's got the buffer strokes. He can afford to do things like that. Super yep. risky. You know, come this weekend... He might need to birdie this hole. And what better time to practice it than here in the event? Sit. And he Ricky. Doesn't want that. A great drive, a okay layup. But now his second approach shot has left him every bit of 30 feet. Isaac, Isaac. Will, yeah, you'll finish with a bogey. Yeah, bogey, bogey, finish. It's fine though. His score's just fine. Gannon, not so much. He's not gonna, fine. He's going to finish at one over for the day and he's going to have some work to do. Nothing guaranteed for Gannon. Great putting from Ricky. From All day. The, from edge circle, few outside, 180 footer it looked like. Yeah, I mean, nearly rung up two putts from nearly 100. Yep. A great putting day for him and for this guy right here. I don't think I remember a single missed putt for Calvin. He was in striking range. He was striking. And not only did Calvin come in here with the most strokes under par, I believe he also shot hot round. Oh, that's helpful. So unnecessarily awesome round for Calvin, really giving himself a, a near shoe in for the finals come this weekend. And one thing you see about this course, though, nobody's yeah, seven hundred safe from nobody's <laughs> safe from the bogey. Nobody. There's gonna be everybody's gonna get bogeys this week. If you could find somebody to go bogey free out there, they're really impressed. I don't know. Possible, it is possible, but somebody's probably gonna do oh, it. Oh, Ricky but. did it. Oh, well, that's true. Yeah, but no bogeys for Ricky today, just three doubles in the front nine. Let's look at that 12th tie for 12th. That's again, and he gets the break too, he gets the shoe in over yep. all those players. So, yep. three under right now. If you are behind Gannon, you're looking at four under is the make. Mm -hmm. Can't, can't be a three. It is gonna be a wild scramble in this brand new format. Come round two. I mean, it's essentially championship day, the last day of the season for most of our field tomorrow. Yep. Uh, for the others, it's going to be good warm up for the finals, final two rounds, which where all players will start back at even par, start from scratch, two round event from there to take down the biggest prize in disc golf history. What a weekend. Yeah. I think six gets in if you have the tie. Six right? under par. Yep. Well, we will see tomorrow. It's going to be another exciting round here at Nevin Park. See you then.